We've seen that in sequential move games there can be Nash equilibria that are supported by non-credible threats that are being taken seriously by some of the players. So in the left-right game with the American and the British player, we saw that the British player could force the American player to go left if she threatens to go left when the American player goes right, as long as the American player takes that threat seriously. Then they would end up at the British preferred outcome rather than the American preferred outcome. But for that to happen, the American would have to believe that the British player would actually go left if she ended up at this node, even though that gives her zero when she could get five. So the American player would have to take seriously a non-credible threat for it to be an equilibrium for the player to go left and for us to end up at this British preferred equilibrium. Now this concern about non-credible threats being taken seriously in certain Nash equilibria caused game theorists to refine the notion of Nash equilibrium for sequential move games. In fact, the game theorist who first pro proposed this was Reinhard Selten, who ended up sharing the Nobel Prize with John Nash. Now, Reinhard Selten said, we shouldn't take Nash equilibria that involve non-credible strategies seriously. We shouldn't believe that there are players who are going to believe non-credible strategies and act on them. As a result, he said, we should only pay attention to what he called subgame perfect Nash equilibria, which are simply Nash equilibria without non-credible threats. So it turns out that solving for these subgame perfect Nash equilibria is easier than solving for all the Nash equilibria in the sequential move game. When we solved for all the Nash equilibria, we took the game tree, turned it into a matrix, worked with the matrix, and then related our results back to the game tree. For subgame perfect Nash equilibria, we can simply work with the game tree. And all we have to do is start at the bottom of the tree and solve it on the way up. So we would start with player two, with the British player, and say, what if that player got to this node? What would be optimal for that player to do from that node? Well, what would be optimal is to choose left, because left gets the player 10, versus right, which gets her 0. Then we'd go to her second node and say, what would be optimal for her to do if she gets to that node? 5 is better than 0, so going right would be optimal for her to do. So eliminating non-credible threats means picking the actions from each node that are optimal from that node if you actually reach the node. So we've just come up with a subgame perfect strategy for the British player. That strategy says go left from the first node and go right from the second node. That's the subgame perfect strategy. Then we go up the tree and we go to the American. And we say the American realizes what's going to happen later. So the American knows by going left, he'll end up at this equilibrium, or at this, at this outcome. If he goes right, he'll end up at this outcome. So 5 is worse than 10, so he should go right. So the subgame perfect strategy for player A would then be to go right. And so player A is going to go right. Player B is going to go left, right, and we have the set of strategies that make up our subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. So all we did was start at the bottom and figure out what's optimal from each node, then take that as given as we move up the tree and figure out what's optimal given what we found earlier on. So let's practice one more time with one other game that has more economic significance. Suppose that we have an existing monopoly. And that existing monopoly can set a low price for its products, or it can set a high price. But the monopoly is worried about a potential, a potential entrant. That entrant is a firm that's not currently in the market, but that might jump into the market. 
in order to jump into the market, it's going to have to pay some fixed cost to set up. But it may come in, and when it comes in, it's going to compete. So that firm can as a, a, have a choice of entering or not entering, so enter or don't enter in both cases. And the payoffs are such that if the existing monopoly price is low and the potential entrant enters, since there's already a low price, they're going to compete and the potential entrant is actually going to make a negative profit because of that fixed entry cost that it had to pay to enter the market. If the existing monopoly charges a low price and the potential entrant doesn't enter, then the monopoly gets a higher profit, it doesn't have to compete, and the potential entrant doesn't make any profit because it didn't enter. If the existing monopoly charges a high price and the entrant comes into the market, then they're going to compete. And because the existing monopoly has a high price, it's going to lose most of its customers. So suddenly, the existing monopoly is stuck with a bunch of costs and no customers. It's going to make a negative profit, and the entrant's going to make a positive profit, even after paying the fixed entry cost. If the existing monopoly price is high and the entrant does not enter, then the monopoly is in the best of both of, of all worlds. It has no competition and it's charging a high price. So it's going to make the highest possible profit and the entrant is not going to make any profit because it didn't enter. So what's the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium in this case? All we have to do is start at the bottom and go up. If the potential entrant reaches this node, he has a choice between a negative profit or a zero profit, the zero profit is better, so not entering is the best action from that node. From this node, the entrant has a choice of a, of a profit of 10 or zero, so its best choice is to enter and get the profit of 10. The existing monopoly can see what's going to happen later. So the existing monopoly knows if it price is low, it's going to end up here. If it prices high, it's going to end up here. Minus 10 is certainly worse than 20. So the existing monopoly subgame perfect strategy will be to price low. And we're going to end up at this outcome. So we found the subgame perfect Nash equilibrium. As in equilibrium, it's just a set of strategies. But in this case, it's a set of subgame perfect strategies that doesn't involve any non credible threats. The strategies are low price for the existing monopoly and don't enter at the first node and enter on the second node for the potential entrant. Now, what's interesting about this case is that we have a monopoly. And it continues to be the only firm in the market because the entering firm doesn't actually enter. But because of the threat of potential entry, the monopolist chooses not to behave like a monopolist would and charge the high price. Instead, it charges a low price to keep the entrant out. Because the monopolist believes the threat that the entrant will come in if the monopolist price, price is high. Because that threat is actually a credible threat. If the potential entrant gets to this point, then entering gets a higher profit than not entering. So it's a credible threat to say, I'm going to enter if you price high. As a result, the existing monopoly price is low. Entrant doesn't come in. And even though it remains the only firm in the market, it charges a low price.